Hello everyone, welcome back to Tim2716, my name is Tim, and today we're going to be building something pretty cool. Now, if you know about SUVs, there's a lot of them, they're super popular and all that, but one of the most overlooked branch of SUVs is the boxy, not very super aerodynamic, not super curvy SUVs. Vehicles like the Kia Soul, Ford Flex, Scion XB, and G-Wagon. Vehicles like that. Unlike the G-Wagon and the Kia Soul, many other vehicles in this category are not that well appreciated by the masses. Yeah, the Ford Flex I would even consider underrated. Which, if you saw the thumbnail, that is actually what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making a bootleg Ford Flex. Now, for our Ford Flex knockoff, we're going to be using this body right here. It has a slightly larger wheelbase than the actual Flex, but I don't mind. We're going to use aluminum. And for the chassis, so I'm going to be picking a chassis that is the best chassis option for this. It has to be one that the transmission tunnel isn't too big, so when I build the interior for it, it actually looks decent and there's not just a giant metal tube sticking out of the floorboard pieces. You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm fairly certain a light truck monocoque would be the best option. As for chassis material, we're going to use corrosion resistant steel. We're obviously going to make it front longitudinal. Now for the front of the vehicle, I'm going to make the suspension double wishbone and the same thing for the rear because it's a suspension that I recognize and you know what? I feel pretty comfortable with it. Now for an engine, I'm going to skip the whole engine making process, but basically take the Ford Flex EcoBoost and turn it into an automation engine. So yeah, a lot more powerful and more torque and maybe a little more reliable. I'm not sure. Now, in order to make a Ford Flex, we have to make sure that the front doors and the rear doors have plenty of space between each other. And we also got, oh my, that's a really long front end. I didn't know it gets that long in this vehicle. We got to make sure the windshield has the right angle. Okay, six-speed auto. Yeah, we have all that. Now, we're going to make the tires a little big. Yeah, I'm going through this pretty quickly because this is the more boring parts. And then I'd much rather show you, like, the actual decoration of the car instead so yeah we are going to do carbon ceramic in the front vented in the back we're going to do an off-road skid tray we're going to make cooling pretty good we're going to give it three rows of course just like the real ford flex okay we're going to give it electric tc plus abs we're going to give it all this and i'm kind of thinking of giving it an off-road suspension because those suspensions Okay, they're not the best handling, but they never really bottom out because they're more bouncy. And that's something I really like about them. So yeah, let's go to the specs and not bad. Not bad specs whatsoever. So but it doesn't accelerate fast enough. So I think we're going to have to make it a little bit faster with gearing and stuff. Mm, I think that's actually pretty good right there. Now for door handles, we're going to make it look just like the actual Ford Flex with these ones, which are the closest to the actual ones I could find. And we're going to try and make a few new colors in order to actually make this car look like a whitish Ford Flex, kind of. Because I want this thing to look pretty similar to the real thing. And, okay, we'll make the whole thing white. Yeah, it kind of looks like one of those like white vans, but it's not going to look like that for long. Now, we have the word Flex. We're going to space out all the letters... Okay, we're going to make sure the nose is the right shape. And now we're going to be working on the grill, which in my eyes and in my experience making this took me nearly an hour to make because I had to look through for all sorts of different types of shapes that wouldn't warp because this thing isn't perfectly flat. Okay, that looks weird and kind of strange. So, yeah, uh, that does not look the best. So, yeah, I'm... Okay, that does not work. I can't tilt it forward because you'll obviously see, like, an inside part of it. So, yeah, let's make the turn signals, the inner ones at the headlights. Okay, we'll duplicate them. Yeah, we'll make them a little farther out. And now, let's see. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do for, like, the middle section of the grill because I think it's a pretty cool-looking car. Like, I've always liked how they look, 
but I've just never realized how difficult it is to probably replicate. Okay, we're gonna place another grill as well. Okay, this looks a little complicated, and yeah, there's like an outer grill. There's like a bar going over it and all that. Okay, well, we're gonna make a new color that like blends in and looks black like plastic or like a grill. Okay, we'll put these to the side because I don't know how I'm going to get a perfect headlight. Okay, now those look don't... None of these are looking good. Okay, that doesn't look good. There's no covering over it. Okay, those just look cheap and crappy, so no. Okay, you know what? These might actually work, now that I think about it. Okay, uh, we're just going to adjust them, make them a little smaller and all that. Okay, we're going to replace one of the side blinkers at some point. Okay, this right here doesn't look bad. In fact, it actually looks pretty good so far. Like, it's not a perfect. None of my cars are perfect. Not even my car with the most effort put into it, which is my turbine thrasher. That's not perfect. Okay, we're going to edit the headlights a little bit more to make sure that they actually, like, learn turn on and glow. Because I don't want defective headlights in the factory, because... This is a pretty expensive car. Now, at some point for the grill and the headlights, I'm going to have to make it look more realistic to an actual grill rather than a big plastic piece because it looks a little realistic to the real thing, but not entirely. So, yeah, because it's missing this bottom grill part. So I'm going to have to place it and I'm going to have to make sure it fits the fog lights and the license plate, which goes slightly over it. Which, I don't actually mind. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, I placed a little few vents over top of the old plastic pieces. Now we have our fog lights, which look pretty cool in my opinion. I think they're like... I actually think they're headlights, actually, now that I think about them. But you know what? That doesn't matter in this game. The only thing that matters in this game is this car turning out good, not blowing up, and being pretty cool. Okay, now... Okay, now that I think about it, we're gonna need pinstripes, because the actual vehicle has, like, pinstripes on it. And, uh, you know what, before I get the pinstripes, I'm gonna work on the back. We need some decent-sized dual exhausts at the back. I'm gonna put a tow hitch, a license plate down there. This right here is gonna be where we put the word flex in at the back, because that's what all cars kind of have a little bit of. Yeah, because usually on a lot of Ford vehicles, there's this bar that's either silver or blends into the actual vehicle that has the name of the vehicle on it. If it's like a large vehicle like F-150 Explorer, Flex, or something like that. Now we're going to place a little bumper down here so you don't scrape up the metal. We'll just put limited here because it's the highest trim level because why not? Okay, and let's see... Now for taillights, we're going to make it a little simple with these ones, based on the actual ones. Now, we're going to make the two middle ones different ones, but the two outside ones, we're going to make them brake lights, because that's pretty cool. Okay, let's see. I think it's going pretty good so far. Hey, that doesn't look that bad. But, now that I think about it, we're going to need a rear wiper. Now, that looks pretty good. Okay... Yeah, I'm not going to adjust the back like that crazy. Okay, yeah, we're obviously going to need roof racks because the real flex has roof racks. We're going to need a little antenna at the back. But before that, we're going to need mirrors because no car is complete without mirrors. Unlike what Elon Musk wants you to think because he really does not like putting mirrors on cars for some reason, which is just weird. I don't get it. I think it's strange. I think it's weird. Okay, yeah, we'll make the actual door handles chrome. Now, okay, what are we going to do? Yeah, these are better roof rack pieces. They look more sturdy and solid. They're not made of chrome. But now let's add our little antenna to the back, which kind of reminds me of the antenna on my Santa Fe. Now we have a fuel filler cap. And let's see, where are the pinstripes? Yep, we're just using a really long letter I. That's what we're going to do for pinstripes, because... You know what? This vehicle needs it. It needs to in order to look fancy and cool. Because what is a Ford Flex without a pinstripe to flex on the haters with? You can't flex on them 
without pinstripes, which is a signature show of being rich. Okay, we obviously have to write Ford on here because that's the name of the vehicle brand. Now, these wheels, I'm going to make them look close to, like, the press image wheels because I want them to look similar. And I don't like the California license plate, so let's, let's pick one that looks different and is not in English. Okay, yeah, I like that for the roof so far. It's a pretty big moon roof, pretty big sunroof, and this is going to be the side blinker that I was talking about earlier. We're going to make that our side blinker. We're going to make the mirror have a side blinker as well, but before that, we cannot forget the front wipers, because without front wipers, you cannot get rid of mud or dirt. And that's basically it. Right here, we have all these pretty cool specs, and now, here it is. Oh yeah, it also has 610 horsepower, so hopefully you guys like that. And now, we're in Beam and G Drive. Well, here it is right here in its full glory, the Ford Flex. This is the interior, it, it does. it's not really that realistic to the real thing. I tried to make like the dashboard a little bit realistic, but yeah, it's not the highest effort thing. I do like the transmission though, because it's not like just a straight pull down line, it's more of a squiggle. Now this is what it sounds like. I think it sounds pretty good for what it is. Yeah, it's a twin-turbo V6, 610 horsepower, and oh boy, this thing moves. It moves like there's no tomorrow. Okay, let's see. We better not crash in this, and pretty soon, you'll see why I chose an off-road suspension for this thing. Like, just the off-road suspensions for me somehow handle better than, like, a race suspension. Probably because, like... They allow the car to, like, move more freely, and it's not pinned to the ground, which isn't good for a race, but the fact that this thing is keeping a brisk pace of a little over... Okay, it nearly rolled over, but, yeah, it's handling pretty well now that I think about it, because this is just insane how, like, it's not having, like, steering issues or anything. Nope, it's doing perfectly fine. In fact, the only issue is, like, actually getting out of one of these bends. That's the issue. And we didn't even spin out. That's my thing about it. Usually with race suspensions, I, they're either really, really good or they're absolutely terrible for me. Because I've had multiple race suspension cars, like, spin out on me. And it's pretty sad now that I think about it. The fact that a race car is more likely to spin out than a Ford Flex, but I'm just going to let you guys admire just how cool this is. This thing is a full-size SUV going almost 180 down the road. Okay, that was pretty good, and... Oh! Oh, no! Oh, no, I gotta check on my family. Kids, are you okay? Okay, the kids on the passenger side are dead but on the driver's side they're perfectly fine oh and the wife is fine yeah she's doing really good she's not even injured but yeah um we're gonna need to have i'm gonna say three hospital visits they're either dead or seriously injured but yeah held up pretty good for hitting a wall at about 150 miles per hour but yeah, we're gonna take it to uh, one of the- we're gonna take it to the center of the land, because that's where all the cool stuff happens. Okay, let's see. Now, oh, we nearly flipped. Actually, no, we nearly jumped, not flipped. Okay, we're gonna take it through this bend, and I like just driving this thing on a near vertical angle. Like, not like vertical upwards, but vertical sideways. I just love doing that, and yep, didn't even flip over. Probably because this thing is ha built to handle things like being on its side at like 90 degrees and handle like almost perfectly. That's what this thing is designed to do, and that's why I chose an off-road suspension. Because if a race suspension were to do this, and oh, oh no, oh 
Oh gosh. Um, I think everyone except for the second and third row are dead. Well, the second row on the driver's side, but yeah, we recovered the vehicle. Now, this big giant concrete structure that you see in front of me, I'm gonna go into it because it looks pretty cool. This is where the half pipe is. And also, I actually took a pretty cool image in this place. I had a car parked at a 51 degree angle in this place. I'll show it to you real quick. But yeah, let's go back to the Ford, which is doing really good for being such a large SUV. Yeah, people are like, oh, SUVs don't handle well. This is probably the best handling SUV I've ever driven in this game. And it's not even like a crazy sport SUV. No, it's off-roading. It has that suspension and something I just, I just love how this car is able to accelerate so quickly and just, I just like how this vehicle isn't slow and oh yeah, the rear got damaged. But luckily everyone on the inside is safe. Okay, my goal, Okay, I'm gonna try and jump out of this pit. Because why not? I think that'll be a really cool goal. Or, better yet, we can go into one of those circles. Okay, I think I can do it. Oh! Oh no! That is... Oh, we lost a wheel, but... Everyone's safe still? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'll recover the vehicle, and... Now we're gonna test. Can this thing drive in a loop-de-loop. -loop. Okay, oh, that's not that good of an idea, but yeah. I'm gonna speed this up to get out of this little ditch because I'm actually in here for a tiny bit. So yeah, while getting out of here, I'm gonna head up to the roof of this giant structure and I'm gonna get ready for the towing test. So here we have 2,100 kilograms of wood, which is about 4,700 pounds. Now, the official towing capacity of a Ford Flex is said to be about 2,000 pounds, which seems awfully low for a vehicle with 365 horsepower. Now, this vehicle is pulling it without a much of a problem. Yeah, it can easily turn while holding it, and yeah, don't want to jackknife the trailer. I learned that from my practical small truck video. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna get this out of here, and now, let's see. Okay, this is cool and all. Let's take it here. We're gonna take it up this big hill. See, like, how good this thing is at pulling stuff up a hill. And first hill, it's doing pretty good for. Now, second hill, um, yeah, that's an issue. Like, it is not working, and... I don't think any part of this vehicle wants to pull it up the hill, which is pretty sad now that I think about it, because... Okay, come on, all... Oh, no, it can't. So, yeah, I think at a, um... I want to say that a 45-degree angle while carrying this nearly the car's entire weight times two was a bit much for this vehicle. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it might be. So, yeah, let's put it in... Okay, and... Oh, wow, that was insane. Yeah, that's not good, but yeah. Okay, we're gonna disconnect from the trailer, and I decide that... You know what? We're just gonna do our own thing from now on. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna just disconnect everything. Get rid of the trailer. Turn off coupling. And now, let's climb up. Now, in order to... Okay, we're gonna just gonna roll this over, but I was gonna say, in order to drift in this vehicle, you need to reach a decently high speed. And the vehicle is pretty crumple-resistant now that I think about it. <coughs> okay, we're gonna drive it off the edge. And, okay, um, are we gonna survive? Okay, the kids and wife are fine. Now, let's see... Okay, now that I think about it... Where does that giant tunnel lead? 
I want to go in and oh no, we hit the edge. That is not good at all. That is so not good. So let's just go up into this tunnel and did we just go upside down? No way. No way we just, oh, and the vehicle flipped itself right back up. That's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna test something. This is probably gonna take a while. I'm probably gonna spend like 15 minutes in this cave or something like that. I don't know, like a lot of the video is probably going to be this. So I'm gonna speed it up because the video would be like almost 40 minutes long if this were kept at normal speed. So yeah, just to prove Ford, the reason it's called the Ford Flex, flexes on every other SUV for its ability to defy gravity and to turn into a roller coaster car. As we just drive along in here, let's just enjoy this vehicle just going in loop-de-loops. Like, I don't even have to add commentary. This is just fun to watch. Yeah. This is like one of those, like, roller coaster footage videos of, like, a roller coaster that's just an infinite loop from, like, Planet Coaster or something like that, which, if I ever get the chance, I might get Planet Coaster, but... Probably not, because I have Theme Park Tycoon 2, which is basically Planet Coaster, but on Roblox. And also, Theme Park Tycoon 2 is just easier for me to use since I've actually used it. But there is another game called Planet Zoo that I might actually buy, because it involves making the worst zoo, the worst inhabitable place for animals ever. But yeah, other than my tangent on games I want... I'm just admiring this car doing loop-de-loops. But yeah, at some point we're gonna speed this up because this is gonna take a long time. In fact, I'm actually considering a cutting forward because I spent a lot of time in this cave just doing loop-de-loops and just doing whatever I want rather than just making the video. Now, right here, we have found a, basically, a downward hole, and I always figure out if I can drive on the walls, basically, like, do a loop-de-loop, -loop, but sideways. Do a loop-de-loop, -loop, but, like, it's laying flat on the ground. Kind of like that one meme that shows, like, a bunch of cars in India driving on the wall. Like, yeah, it's a really weird meme, but it's, like, the most dangerous race ever. Yeah, I'm gonna try and recreate that. Oh, I did not mean to press that. That right there is my fire ignition button. It's backspace. I set that so I can set cars on fire whenever I feel like it, because... What is a good car game that doesn't allow you to set cars on fire? Seriously, what is a good car game without it? Name me one car game that you can't set things on fire in that is good that isn't Mario Kart, because I don't think Mario Kart will allow you to do that, but I don't care. I think Mario Kart is such a good game, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is have Coconut Mall and I'll be happy. Or one of the Wii courses. That's basically all for Mario Kart, but in every other game, I want a car that can catch on fire. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I used to play Forza, but not anymore, because you can't set those cars on fire. That's so sad. Like, what is the point of it, even? What is the point of playing Forza if you can't set stuff on fire? But yeah, right now I'm going to attempt to drive on the walls, not in a loop-de-loop, -loop, on the walls. And, oh my, I am actually doing it. I'm actually doing it. No way. Oh, this is... Oh. Yeah, that was for a short time, but... Hey, at least we did it, and everyone inside is all fine. Yeah, everyone except for the front of the car. Gosh, that looks broken. So yeah, I just recovered it, and now... Let's just get out of this horrible place. Of course, we had to crash again, and... 
You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm just gonna, like, just... I don't even know if I should skip to get out of here or something, because... I feel like that loop-de-loops are one of those things you can't skip out on in Beam&G Drive if you're doing them. Seriously, why would you skip out on loop-de-loops? But, yeah. I'm just gonna decide that I'm not talking anymore until we actually get out of this cave, because... You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm gonna do a bunch of loop-de-loops. No talking interruptions. And... Yeah, reverse loop-de-loop -loop didn't work that good, but at least it was a good try. So let's go! Darn it, I can't believe I was that close to getting out. I was that close. So close. But anyway, let's take the flex, do some more loop-de-loops in order to build enough momentum to get out of this hole of despair and misery. And now, with that, we can get out. Can we get out? Yes, we can. We had just enough momentum. And you know what? I'm just gonna head off to the pool to take a swim in my car, because why not? Seriously, we need to see how much water this thing can go through before hydro-locking, and... Yeah, um, I'm fairly certain it just hydro-locked. No, it didn't. Okay, yeah, the engine just dried up, and... Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, just... These are pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna take a guess that we can't go much above the front tire, and... Yeah, this should give you an idea of just how big the car we're driving is. Like, look at it. It's huge. It's awesome. It's incredible. It is just massive and spectacular. But yeah, I'm going to drive it into the water now because, yeah, my guess, not much above the wheel. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is pretty... Okay, yeah, we just hydro-locked and now... Okay, this is getting dire... Okay, yeah, that's two, three, four, five, six. It took, so basically, just barely below the wheel, and I'm sorry to the kids and wife if they're getting all soaked from the water that shouldn't be getting in the car, but... Hey, that's what happens when you drive through about two meters of water. That's what happens. And now, we're just gonna go over here to, like, test the climbing of this vehicle, because why not? And, you know what? I just love driving this thing around. It floats, but yet it's so heavy that it feels like a boulder. It's like a boulder on, like, one of those, like, carts that you can push around and, like, a store or a restaurant or something. Yeah, it feels like that. Now, we're gonna go up this to see this thing's climbing ability and suspension, which is looking pretty good. Like, if this thing is not pulling cargo, it's doing pretty good. Okay, going down wasn't that bad, but now I think that we should go up one of these hills because, you know what? Going up a hill is just half the battle. Actually, staying up is the other half. And yeah, our front isn't high enough to get up there. Actually, it is, but our rear isn't. So let's go down. And uh, oh boy, we're gonna go fast down. And oh no, I just I just got new paint on this car. I've driven it for almost 7.7 .7 miles. That's it. That's all it's on the odometer. But now, let's take it up this hill right here. Okay, so far it's doing pretty good. The wheels are smoking a bit, but... Well... Can't go any farther up. Wheels are just stuck, and the vehicle is stuck. But you know what? That's okay. You know why it's okay? 
Because this is a cool visage. A vehicle stuck on an angle that's like on a 32.6 degree angle or something. And yeah, everyone inside's okay. And now we're in Italy. This right here, we're just going to drive it in a small city. A city built for small cars. So yeah, I'm fairly certain that our full-size SUV will totally work in this giant, in this tiny little city. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to make some tight turns, as this vehicle does take some wide turns, but... You know what? Okay. Oh, we're going to hit the wall. We are definitely going to hit the wall. So, this is probably going to be the hardest turn I'm going to take. Because I'm going to have to back up, like, multiple times. Oh my, I I kind of suck at driving in this game. Unless it's like in a straight line or low speed track. I don't, I'm not exactly the best at driving in this game. Yeah, that's basically what it is. So, we take this turn and, well, I've never fully explored the city. That's something you should know about me. Like, I spend most of my time either in the grass, on the grid, or somewhere else. That's where I usually spend most of my time in BeamNG Drive. But I almost never go to the city. But the city is a very beautiful place, and it's a beautiful view. Okay, and for such a big car, I feel like this thing takes more than one lane, and now we have a very sharp turn. Okay. Oh, we're finally onto normal-sized roads. That's pretty nice. Fairly certain they chose BeamNG Drive because... Like, I'm fairly certain BeamNG Drive chose Italy and... Oh, no. Yeah, we hit a wall, but you know what? We're fine. Everyone inside is fine. Fairly certain BeamNG Drive chose Italy because it's famous for having really small roads and stuff like that. Okay, and... Oh, no. Oh, we hit a wall, but yeah, I think we'll be okay. Okay, let's just go down the hill for the rest of the time, because there's somewhere special I want to take this vehicle. Somewhere really special. It's totally not the ocean. But yeah, let's just take it down. We're going a brisk 50 miles per hour on a road that we should probably only be going like 30 on. Nah, let's go faster. 70. Eh, it's a little fast. I think 50, I think 60 is a good enough speed. Now, what are we going to do here? Oh okay, yeah, that's a nice viewing place. But I don't just want to go there. No, I want to go to the bottom. Because I, for some reason, have an obsession with ending these... Ouch. With ending these videos by... Just driving my car into the ocean. For some reason, I have an obsession with doing that because in multiple videos, I've done that. Even if it wasn't just driving them into the ocean, but rather driving them into a river or off a cliff. That's kind of the thing I end a lot of these with. Basically, I end them in a way which results in the car being utterly destroyed. And so far, we're doing pretty good. The off-road suspension allows for this thing to go over curbs and just not destroy your spine. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to go around and, yeah, we did pretty good. I can't see exactly how fast we're going because of the steering wheel, but I don't really mind. All I know, we're definitely going way faster than we should be. And just all this... This is just a beautiful road. Everyone's still okay, just as usual. And, okay, yeah, I just had to reset the vehicle. It was having steering issues. Probably because of crashing a lot. And now, there's a whole lot of cool things that we're going to see on our way down. Like, more trees, a better view of the ocean. Yeah, I'm just going to go this way because... I think this is just a better way down, and yeah, I can't believe I got stuck on that curb. It's kind of embarrassing now that I think about it. So let's go down. 
Yeah, it's just me humming something completely random. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know if it is anything, but as we keep driving down, we have a we have not that much left to go before we reach the ocean. Which of course is our destination, because why not? We all know that the ocean is one of the best places in BMG Drive. Probably because gas cars don't work and let's just roll in, let's jump in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My wife and kids are gonna have to live with the fishes. Oh, but hey, we landed a wheel side down. That's pretty cool. And yeah, I don't think there's a way to get out of here at all. So, well, I'm just stuck at the bottom of the ocean in a Ford Flex, and... Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>